Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create a shooting star effect in DaVinci Resolve 17. Inside your edit window, hold Ctrl and press I to insert a static image or video file into your project. Use Command instead of Ctrl if you are a Mac user. Inside your Media Pool Master Bin, find the thumbnail of the video or image file that you have inserted. Click and drag this to the project timeline. By default, the chosen JPEG image that I have chosen will last for 5 seconds on screen. Using the Selection Mode tool, which you can also do by pressing A, click on the right side of the edit and drag your mouse cursor to resize if you wish. Pay attention to the numbers which appear in the dark box to the side of your mouse cursor, indicating the change in the duration at the top and the total duration at the bottom. To insert your shooting star, go to Effects Library, Underneath Toolbox, select Effects, and go to select Fusion Composition. Click and drag one of these effect filters to the video track above that containing your original image or video file. Use the Selection Mode tool to adjust the Fusion Composition clip if you wish. In this case here, I will ensure that the length of this particular clip will be the same as that of my original JPEG image of 10 seconds. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Nodes panel, hold Shift and press Space to open up the Select Tool window. Use the search box at the bottom to find the Ellipse tool. Select this and go to click on Add. This particular Ellipse node will make up the front of the shooting star that we will create in this tutorial. With this Ellipse 1 node selected, go to Inspector and underneath controls, to give a blurred edge to the white circle, change soft edge from 0.1 to 0.01. Decrease the size of the circle by changing width and height to 0.025. Back in the nodes panel, click in the blank section in the nodes grid to deselect any of the properties in the inspector window. Hold shift and press space and go to select the P-Emitter tool. With this new P-Emitter tool selected, return to Inspector to have a single shooting star appear just after 4 seconds of screen time. I will change number from 10 to 0.01. And to ensure that the shooting star doesn't appear in the sky for too long, I will reduce lifespan from 100 to 25. To vary the starting position slightly of your shooting stars which will appear in your Fusion Composition clip, change position variance to 0.002. Select Velocity. To ensure particle movement across the sky but at a gentle pace, increase velocity from 0 to 0.18. To have the shooting star move at a diagonal trajectory across the sky from the top towards the bottom, Decrease angle to minus 15. This will make the shooting star move from the top left towards the bottom right. If you wish for the shooting star to start from the top right corner and go downwards towards the bottom left instead, an example value that you can apply to angle will be minus 165. And to vary the direction in which the shooting stars in your Fusion Composition clip go, increase angle variance to 15. Go to Select Style. In order to attach the Ellipse 1 tool to the P Emitter node, so that the particles emitted by DaVinci Resolve are the white ellipse shapes, we need to change Style from Point to Bitmap. You should now notice to the left of your P Emitter 1 node a yellow triangle appearing. Click on the grey box to the right of Ellipse 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the yellow box which has now appeared next to P Emitter 1 to make a connection. Select Size Controls. In order to create the illusion of the shooting star appearing and disappearing on the sky background, we need to ensure that the ellipse shape is small at the start of its lifespan. This will then increase in size and maintain a large size for the next two quarters of its lifespan, before then decreasing in size in the last quarter of its lifespan to a very small state to make it look like it is disappearing in the sky. In order to achieve this, find the size over life grid, 
click and drag the left sided node to the bottom left corner. Select the part of the line which appears on top of the first vertical line which you can see on the grid from the left side and drag your mouse cursor to the top of this particular grid. Repeat the same process for the part of the line which appears on top of the last vertical line towards the right. Now drag the final node to the right to the bottom right corner. To add to the appearance and disappearance effects, select fade controls. To have the star fade in in the first 10% of its lifespan, change in from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.1. And to have the star fade out in the last 10% of its lifespan, change fade out to 0 0.9. With your P emitter node selected, Hold Shift and press Space, and go to select P Directional Force. Since we have already set the direction in which the particles making up our shooting star will go, what we need to do is now create a wind type effect which will change the course of the shooting star to add a curvature to its trajectory to make it flow in an almost arc shape across the sky. To have the star change course slightly and float towards the bottom right side of my image file, I will change the strength of the directional force to 0.007. Avoid setting a value too high so that your shooting star does not disappear off screen. And to help push the shooting star particle towards the bottom right side slightly, I will change direction to minus 60. Now to create the particle trail which will appear behind the original ellipse shape on your shooting star. With your P-Directional Force node selected, hold Shift and press Space, and go to add P-Spawn. With the P-Spawn node selected, under Inspector and Controls, we need to ensure that the lifespan of the spawning particles isn't too long, otherwise the line that appears on your shooting star effect will be too long and too straight, giving it an unrealistic appearance. What I will therefore do here is reduce the lifespan from 100 to 10. To have the starting position of the spawning particles vary slightly around the initial ellipse shape, increase position variance to 0.002. Select Velocity. The lower the velocity transfer value, the more spread out the spawning particles will be from the front of your shooting star. I will decrease velocity transfer to 0.685. Go to Style. In order to create the appearance of the spawning particles, we need to apply ellipse appearance settings similar to those that we set in the first ellipse 1 node. Before we can do this, we must first change style from point to bitmap, as we did with the P emitter 1 node. Go to size controls. To create the illusion that the trail of your shooting star fades as the particles float through the sky, refer to the size over life grid and drag the left sided node to the top left corner so that the spawning particles appear in its biggest size at the very beginning of its lifespan. To have these particles reduce in size to create the look that these are fading as the shooting star goes across the sky, drag the right sided node down to the bottom right corner. Now to create the ellipse shape which will create these spawning trailing particles. Select the initial ellipse 1 node. Hold Ctrl and press C to copy. Deselect the Ellipse 1 node. Hold Ctrl and press V to paste. Deselect the Ellipse 1 node. To enhance the fading effect of these trailing particles, hold Shift and press Space, and go to add a Blur tool. Connect the duplicate ellipse node to the yellow input arrow beside Blur 1. With the duplicate Ellipse 1 node selected, under Inspector and Controls, keep Soft Edge at 0.01, but change both Width and Height to 0.015, so that these appear smaller than the leading particle in the shooting star. With your Blur 1 tool selected, under Inspector and Controls, change Blur Size to 12. Now connect Blur 1 to the green arrow which appears on top of P-Spawn. Select P-Spawn 1 once again. 
hold shift and press space and go to add a P render tool. This particular node will ensure that DaVinci Resolve can process the particles that you have created in this project so that they make up part of your final video. To add additional fade and glowing effects to your shooting star, with the P render node selected, hold shift and press space and go to add a second blur tool. Since we already applied a blur effect to the trailing particles in the shooting star, the blur size applied to the whole star should be kept low. I will set the value for this particular variable to 3.5. With blur tool selected, hold shift and press space and go to add a soft glow effect. Increase the glow slightly to 11, which will intensify the white shade of your shooting star. Now connect soft glow to media out one. And select either the left or right view circles which appear underneath media out one to see a preview of your shooting star effect inside your fusion window. At present the shooting stars in my current project appear too close to the middle of the screen and disappear off canvas. In order to change the starting position of these shooting stars, select P emitter 1 and underneath inspector and region, we can see that the region setting is sphere, represented by the red circle that you can see in the middle of your canvas on media out 1. This particular circle marks the starting point on your screen where the shooting stars will appear. In order to adjust this so that they appear higher in the sky and don't float off screen, you can adjust the X and Y offset values underneath translation or click and drag on the green double headed arrow which appears inside the red sphere to change this position. Return to your edit window. In order to make further adjustments to the location and the appearance of the shooting star, select the fusion composition clip on your edits timeline. Go to inspector. I wish for the star to appear slightly smaller and therefore I will decrease zoom X and Y to 0.7. Scroll down from transform to composite and change the opacity level to 75 to make the star fade into the night sky that you have chosen. To make further adjustments to the location of the shooting star itself, select the transform tool which appears underneath the edit preview screen and click inside the frame which appears containing your shooting star and adjust the location of this. Ensure that the white fusion composition transform frame always stays on the canvas of the chosen image or video file in your project. If this frame is positioned off screen, you may lose sight of your shooting stars. Click on the transform tool once again to deselect this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.